What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 47 update. This week, they've added open world mode and all the survival you can do with it. Let's get into it, shall we? Icarus Week 47 open world. Icarus Week 47 update. Open world is here and survival with persistence. Jump into open world and play Icarus with full persistence, the full map, and no timer. Open world is here. This week, we're releasing the highly anticipated traditional survival mode with both the Styx and Olympus maps available to play. This has been one of the most requested and discussed features by our player community. When you start a session, you'll be given a variety of drop locations, difficulty options, and challenges such as world bosses, storms, and hordes to overcome. With full persistence and multiple sessions being able to be saved simultaneously, the planet can be conquered any way you wish. Below, we also talk to the future of open world and other big upcoming features, such as dedicated servers. Jump in and get all the details you need before launching into Icarus and beginning your newest challenge. So some key features about open world. Open world will provide the traditional survival experience, placing you in a battle against the elements and predators of the planet. Your sole objective is to survive Icarus challenges as long as you can. You will be able to choose between either the full 64 square kilometers Olympus map previously available as an outpost or the full sticks map for your open world session. Multiple drop points in different biomes will be available for you to select. Your session, your buildings, and resources will be persistent with no timer or expiration to worry about. Storms may damage your buildings, but only while you are playing. The planet is rife with danger with storms respawning world bosses, hordes, and scaling predators across the landscape, along with fierce storms to contend with, but there is no option for a threat for your environment so always be on your toes your friends can join you on your open world following you onto the planet in the same drop point you chose and you'll find moa and buffalo across the biome for taming as pets and transport with 64 square kilometers to explore resources are abundant deep ore deposits can be found so there is a wealth of ore to smelt and craft workshop items can be brought down to the surface and taken back with you to space so returning to grab necessary gear is easy as leaving it and returning in your drop Ship. Multiple open world sessions can be hosted, so if you feel like taking a different approach, starting somewhere different, or simply testing yourself under a different difficulty setting, you can simply start a fresh session from the menu. So they kind of say how to play the open world. Open world can be found in your new home screen on the left hand list of game modes. Once selected, you can carry an existing session or start a new one. You can select your dropship's landing location when you create a new game session, and there's a range of different sites on the map to spawn on with varying resources and whatnot. But beware. Once you choose a drop point, this is where your dropship will leave from and return every time you join that session. So pick one near where you're planning to establish your base. Otherwise, you have to start a new game. You'll have drop point choices in every biome, so use your experience in missions and outposts to plan accordingly for what you may need to survive in the harsher climates. Once selected, begin your session and let the games begin. So open world missions and outposts. There are three game modes now, open world, missions, and outposts. Open world being the more traditional survival experience, where missions are the time-limited curated experiences on Icarus that challenge you and reward exotics and Ren. Outposts are the smaller one-by-one -one square kilometer sandbox building environments with regenerating resources and options for threat-free experiences where you can build, create, and experiment to your heart's desire. They did state they put a table together for the key differences in each mode below. And this is what that chart looks like. As you can see, mining exotics can only be done in mission. World world bosses can be done in open world and mission. Missions being the only thing that is not persistent. And the full map is only available now on open world and missions. You can also not have deep ore deposits on outposts. And then they ask the million dollar question, why add persistence to your game now? And they respond with, it's one of the most popular requests for Icarus for a long time. And it's how traditional survival games are structured. They got some feedback about how people didn't want to rebuild a base so frequently, so they added the open world experience with persistence. And adding new modes like open world helps cater to those that who want that similar experience to traditional survival games. So we're going to show you guys real quick how to do the open world mode and how to select your drop ships and stuff like that. So once you bring up your character select screen, you're going to notice on the left hand side under the play the game option, you now have open world, a persistent survival experience. Choose your drop point, build your base, battle enemies and weather across the entire map as long as you can. And as we mentioned before, you can choose between Olympus and sticks. 
Here you can create a new open world. Choose your difficulty, easy, medium, or hard, and name it. Then you can drop down with whatever you want. On this screen, you'll see multiple areas where you can drop down at. On the left hand side, you'll see a little description, the temperature of the drop zone, how abundant water is within the drop zone, which is low on this one, how abundant trees are within the drop zone, how abundant ores are on the drop zone, the abundancy of aggressive animals, abundancy of food, how abundant oxide is, how abundant rocks are, and how abundant passive creatures are in the drop zone. And they'll give you the name. This one's called Dry Ridge. As you can see here in the snowy plateau, it's cold with medium water, low trees, medium ores, and medium aggressive animals. You could choose whatever drop zone you want. Just remember, when you choose that drop zone, that is your one for that whole entire mission. If you want to choose a different location, you're going to have to create a new open world after you drop. On the Olympus map, you have several different locations you can spawn at. Conifer 2, Arctic 1, Desert 1, Conifer 1, and in the top right corner, Desert 2. Once you choose the location you want to drop down, hit drop here. Then you choose whether you want to be stream friends or private. And once you drop down, you're free to do whatever you want to do with whoever you want to do it with. Also, keep in mind you get full XP while you're in open world mode. World bosses respawn and are available to kill. When you're done with this mission or want to go back up and change gear, just go back to your drop pod and hit return to station. And as you can see, your character is no longer tied to a prospect or an outpost or whatever. And when you want to go back to your open world, just click on it, post it, select your drop down gear and hit confirm loadout. As you can see, there's no more Olympus daylight outpost down here. So we're going to talk in the future of open world. With this being the first iteration of the open world, they talked about some features that they want to add. Resource regeneration is already something players have asked for and an outpost resources respawn each time you join. So you have ample building blocks for truly creative build. In open world, we still want you to earn and work for your resources. Where persistent environment immersion is important and therefore any signs of regeneration should feel natural and subliminal. And they talk about watching you guys feedback closely. And they expect that most players probably want to go to open worlds and missions so you can switch between them at any given point in time and work towards random exotics for workshop items. Of course, in open world, you could choose to do all the way up to tier four uh, tech instead. They're also looking for ways to integrate the missions and open world sessions in the future, such as starting some missions from your open world base. And they talk about how they designed their DLCs with this in mind. They talk about how they've been working on the DLC and also been working on dedicated servers, which they are in the process of finalizing this process and getting it ready for a public test. Soon. And guys, we got the change log this week in the new content section. They mentioned all the stuff they need to as far as modifying and adding the open world. And from where they renamed the Olympus Prospect from Daylight Olympus to just Olympus. They tweaked the difficulty settings for new open world prospects and removed Olympus outpost. Existing saves were migrated to an Olympus open world. Your old outpost is now an Olympus open world prospect. And in the fix section this week, damaged buildings can no longer be upgraded without first being repaired. So they fixed the spelunking mission where it was basically like a 10 to 15 minute mission. They increased all the requirements for all resources and basically doubled or tripled outside resources and doubled higher tier resources to make it a little bit longer, to give it a little bit more duration. It's still shorter than most missions, but and still gives you more reasons to explore and use the provided tools efficiently because they'll give you additional bonuses for resources. So, And of course, they say world bosses now have the ability to respond if the correct stat flag is set. They renamed the rustic bench to the rustic sitting bench to not confuse it with the actual crafting bench. Here's a really good update. Disabled weather damage on rustic furniture. They temporarily disabled buffalo from spawning on outposts to prevent mounts from being accessible on outposts, but will be re-enabled once the stat to prevent juvenile spawning is added. And in the future content this week, added the potato item in the set, added tomato and potato growth stages in the farming table, created Moe's cave template and cave template asset, adding striker flinch and death audio in events, working on the glacier a little more, fixed normal maps and adjusted shader settings for all aspen tree variants, 
Mention the swamp a little more. Looks like they're adding all new creatures to the data tables. Added throwing knives across all tiers of basic knife options. Initial work to set up audio implementation for a rock breaking feature. Created a new data table to find breakable rock data and move some hard coded references from the base class there in a default row. Added a multicast to play effects when a node is broken off of the rock base and a placeholder audio event for this. Does anybody know what that means? Is that talking about maybe making stuff terraform them and breaking stuff off? Or is that just talking about voxels or whatnot? Or just maybe the stones? Adam B Dog attack vocalizations and event. You know what B Dog means? Looks like they're working on some Prometheus story missions. Some more B Dog aggro sounds and event. More Prometheus missions quest flows. And they feature locked throne spears and items like knives to prevent accessing in the current patch. Here's something interesting. Implemented the swamp bird creature, including mount setup. Still needs physics setup and crit region setup. Waiting on corpse and skeleton skinning pass and fur groom. Here's something else that's quite interesting. Creating souls hideout pre-build base and adding souls communication device. So a souls pre-built base that's awesome so we may actually have some kind of persistent or pre-built structures in the game shortly don't see anything else in this change log thank you guys for watching don't forget if you like what you see to like comment and subscribe to the channel subscribing to the channel helps us quite a bit by reaching our goal of a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and also we have a discord guys if you want a great community to join and check out check out our Icarus discord we post all kinds of stuff in there all kinds of stuff for the updates and everything else in between there's a link to the discord in the description down below and also on the home page also what do you think about the open world mode are you going to use it comment down below hopefully we'll see you guys next time peace